Is it possible to save for a house deposit in just 10 months, considering the cost of living crisis and the ever-increasing house prices in the UK? Today, I'll share the exact steps that we took to save for the deposit of our home just after moving to the UK in less than a year. For most of us, myself included, buying a house would be the most expensive purchase that we would make. In today's video, I won't just share steps and tips that helped us as a family to buy our first house, but I'll also share lessons from friends that have bought their own home too, or multiple homes, and also best practice. According to the UK House Price Index Summary, February 2024, the average price of a property in the UK is 281,000. That means a 10% deposit will be 28,000 and a 5% deposit would be 14,000, while 25% deposit would be 70,000 pounds. Now consider how long it will take to save up for a deposit with a monthly savings of 180 pounds. And this 180 pounds is the median household savings in the UK. To buy a house with the average price in the UK, it will take six and a half years to save for a five percent deposit and 11 years to save for a 10 percent deposit the question then is what is the fastest way to save for a deposit determine the goal imagine driving from london to visit your sister in manchester and you don't put your sister's postcode in the map instead you put manchester sure you will eventually reach manchester where your sister lives but you won't be able to get to a house exactly because you didn't put a postcode. The same goes for saving for a house deposit. A fuzzy goal won't get you to where you want to reach. You need a clear target. And how do you do this? Step one, consider your income. Generally, lenders would offer mortgages for houses that are priced around four to 4.5 times your annual income. And this is a good starting point to determine the house price range you can comfortably afford. The second step is to receive search the market and now you can do this by going through online property portals but make sure you check the recently sold part of the portal instead of what is just listed or you talk to the local estate agent the third step is to define your target deposit with a realistic house price in mind you can now determine the minimum deposit that is required to actually buy the house most lenders require a minimum of five to ten percent deposit but a higher deposit up to 25 percent can give you access to better mortgage deals. For example, let's say you have an annual income of £40,000. The affordable house price range would be around £180,000 and the minimum deposit considering 5% deposit would be 9000 while if you're able to push yourself to 20%, that would be around 36000 Now imagine that you're doing this as a couple. That means your money can easily double. But also remember that your house deposit is not the only expense that you have when buying a home. Now let's say you're going Goal is 20,000. Instead of just tearing down that goal and saying this is impossible, let's break it down into achievable milestones. Ask yourself, how long do you want to save this money? Let's say you want to do this in 10 months. That means you have to save 2,000 pounds every month. But let's say you want to do this in two years, that will be £835 every month. What you need to remember and strive for is a savings plan that motivates and stretches you. You don't want it too easy that you are barely trying or don't want it too ambitious that you're going to give up. And this is also true with other goals as well. It's the same strategy that every business uses to create business goals and targets or to even to give goals and targets to their sales people. They basically ask, what can we do without even trying? And then they now add some more to that and use that as the goal or, or target. So if you can easily save, let's say 200 pounds monthly without trying much, ask yourself, can you push that amount to 400,000? Or if you're living paycheck to paycheck, can you start saving 100 pounds? And later, maybe think of increasing that to 150 pounds. And for some others, this won't even be enough, especially if you're looking at a short timeline. That means Means you have to be creative and you have to earn more money or you have to make hard calls or a combination of all of this and we'll touch more on this later on in the video if you are buying your first home and you don't have a lifetime isar account you and you still qualify to open one please please open that account 
today. This is one mistake that I've seen a lot of people make. With a lifetime ISA account, the government gives you 25% extra for every money that you contribute into that account to either buy your first home or to save for retirement. And within that wrapper, you can then decide to invest in stocks or just save the money in cash. In the 10 months that we saved for our house deposit, we maxed out our LISA twice, getting £2,000 from the government and that was a big help. Most cash lifetime ISA accounts do offer generous interest and that would be my first option, especially if I want to buy a house between one to two years. And I say one to two years because you lose the government's money addition if you withdraw within one year of opening the account. Personally, we had the same issue and we just had to wait till after one year in order to finalize the deal with the developer, even though everything else was in place. But if a LISA isn't an option for you, there are other high yield savings accounts. All you just need to do is do a search on Money Savings Suspect website and you'll find plenty of accounts that offers generous interest. I've had people ask me if they should invest their savings in a stock market or they should just keep it as cash. My rule of thumb is if I'm looking to withdraw that money within one to three years, even five years timeline, I would invest in a savings account. First choice would be ELISA and if I'm not qualified, I would use a normal savings account. The next step is to review and audit your expense. To do this, you need to get your bank statement for the past three to six months and categorize your expenses. You need to see where you can cut back on. Everybody that I know that have done this exercise are usually shocked to see that they can save money in so many places that they never realized was possible in the first place. You'll find subscriptions that you're not using. You'll find loads of other expense that you either don't like, that doesn't add value to you, or that doesn't align to your goals and values. And these are the first things that I want to stop spending my money on. In fact, I did a video where I shared 15 things that I won't waste my money on and you can check that out in the description. My golden rule with spending is to 1. Not spend more than I earn and 2. Spend only on things that align with my goals, values and ultimately what's important to me. So let's share some savings tips. These tips are tips and strategies that I have used and also others have used in order to boost their savings. The first thing we did personally in our family to reach our goal very fast is to live on one income. And this is very, very important, at least for us. And I know people would say, oh, but this is not possible. But this was what we did. Myself and my wife, we don't see our income as individual income, but we see it as part of our household income, just like every other source of income like like maybe a side or so or a rental and i know this isn't for everyone but this is what works for us and as a result of that we decided that we are going to live on just one income and save the other income this allowed us to save about 40 percent of our household income at that time secondly we had a dedicated account that is separate from our usual spending account just for this goal and as i mentioned earlier that account is a LISA account. With this account, we don't have any cards. With this account, when we want to withdraw our money, it would usually take about five working days. And I think the account we used at the time was Moneybox. And because of all these things that are in place, this created additional friction. So it wasn't easy for us to just get up open up the app and withdraw the money. The third thing we did was to make sure that our money goes into that account automatically. Immediately we are paid. In fact, we set it up that the next day after our paycheck comes in, the money leaves our account and goes into that savings. Out of sight, out of mind. And this is very, very important. If you want to make progress, you have to automate your savings. This is a psychological trick that you can play on yourself. Make sure it's in another account, you're not seeing it, and it's done automatically. Because the truth is, if you're just waiting to see what money you're going to have left at the end of the month, you would not just make enough progress. Another tip is to sell things that you can do without. You can sell pretty much anything today on platforms like Facebook Marketplace and the likes. And this will give you extra income to add to your savings. The next thing or the next point is to actually boost your savings with extra income. And this is very, very important because the truth is there is a limit to how much you can cut back, but there is no limit to how much you can earn. For my friends that are medics, this is a 
lot easier because you can just pick up extra shifts and some more money outside of your normal income but don't fall into the trap of earning this money and then spending it because you know that you're earning this money for one go only remember you're trying to get to one destination which is to save up to buy your house and other ways that you can earn extra income is to actually change jobs especially if you have a longer horizon and maybe you want to buy your house in two years or five years you can decide to change jobs maybe once or twice before you actually put in your application for the house but most importantly you must remember that you want to be in a job for at least maybe a year or max eight nine months at the minimum before applying for a mortgage because if you just move to a new job and then you apply for a mortgage it affects your affordability and how the mortgage company sees you changing jobs is a great way to actually increase your pay and in most cases you will basically be doing the same thing for a different company and you're going to be better paid and for me this is how i've increased my income by over 300 percent in just four years you can also negotiate a pay rise in your current place of work if you don't want to move and one way that i've done this in the past is to actually ask my boss what you need to do to actually get that pay rise or to get a promotion for a certain time period let's say before your next appraisal or something and with that information you work towards that and your boss would put you up for that promotion and fight for you. You could also get an extra job and there are many options. The best ones that I've seen people do is actually driving either for a delivery company or for Uber and there are also jobs that you can do at the weekends or in the evening in addition to your 9 to 5. Remember that this isn't permanent especially if you're doing a second job but you're just doing what you have to do legally at the shortest time possible to boost your savings. Imagine getting an extra 5 500 pounds monthly coming from this side also or extra job and this money goes directly into your savings you can also register in sites like user testing appen and respondents these sites pay a lot more than normal survey sites for example look at the list of tax that is available in my respondent profile that i can apply for there are other ways to either save or earn money but just a quick recap of everything that we've shared number one determine your goal then you break down that goal to achievable parts and determine where you want to keep your money review and audit your expenses to see where you can cut back and then you cut back on that expense if you're living as a couple and it's possible for you strive towards living off one income and then you can save the other income also you could sell things that you don't use and lastly strive and and think towards how you can boost your salary because earning more has no upside you can do this by either changing your jobs asking for a pay rise starting a side hustle or using sites like user testing and respondents in order to earn that extra income thank you so much for watching one of the strategies that we mentioned to maximize your savings is actually to save in a lisa account click on the video popping up on your screen right now to learn everything about isas including a lisa and also the new rules that are forming to effect this tax year. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.